great bass playing, Nancy. <laughs> it was awesome. Let me do it I know. <laughs> you, you, you got it. You got the funk going on there. Uh, joining it. us next here on Big Blend Radio, Nancy and I, oh, we've got our special guest co-host here, Judy Cohen. We call her Traveling Judy. And our next guest on our Summer Fest show is five-star chef Ivan Flowers. He's a culinary instructor in Temecula. Uh, teaches high school students how to cook. Yes, they are learning. And uh, he is joining us today to make sure that we cook good stuff over the summer. And today it's all about grilled Pacific swordfish. So not any swordfish. You need to go into the Pacific Pacific. Ocean and get it. And uh, (laughs) listen, white vinegar is involved, citrus, and a butter glaze. So everyone, Mm -hmm. the recipe is up on blendradioandtv.com. Just uh, type in the search box, swordfish. It'll be the only recipe we have on swordfish. (laughs) So welcome back, Chef Ivan Flowers. How are you? Hi guys, how you doing? We're good. doing good. How are you? How's summer going How's in go- San Diego? Nice, good weather. Yeah. No complaints. June gloom, unfortunately, but not oh, too bad. Uh, you know, that's what we have wine for. You know, yeah. good wine or a nice <laughs> yeah. beer, good food. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but you got that right. So- so do we, this is, this is the truth about you. I said before we brought you on, it's about cooking with integrity. It's about getting real, you know, real food. And looking at the photo of this grilled swordfish, you know, Nancy and I are allergic, but Judy, you eat fish, so she's going to be your go-to on this. Um, but it looks really delicious, this dish, and it looks like we're eating real food and not getting all the sodium off the shelf. That's your new nickname, by the way, no sodium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. The, le- well, the, the less sodium, the better. There's a lot of yeah. alternatives. Yeah. Well, I mean, a little bit works, but you don't you don't need to kill some. I just watched a recipe the other day on the Food Network where they made a um, a short rib dish, and they put I think seventeen thousand milligrams seventeen 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 thousand milligrams of salt in the total dish. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. That's a little. That's a little. That's not so bad. Seventeen, just seventeen. That's not he so said bad. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand oh. milligrams went in the whole dish. Yeah. What yeah, would you do, Lisa? Yeah. Well, no, that's exactly. crazy. That would be my dinner last night. Okay, <gasps> Chef Island. <gasps> I had to throw the dinner out last night. I made dinner and I had to throw it out. This is a trick. What did you make? Tell- well, oh listen, listen, salt. This, you're going to get so mad out of me. You're, I, it, this, she made salt. You don't, no, this is how stupid I am, right? So we have, we go get rice, and we're in a, a friend's place in, in Flor, uh, Florida, in uh, Colorado here, Florence, and mm-hmm. in her house, and I'm like, okay, so I got this rice thing, and it's a box of rice stuff, and then you put the seasoning. Well, Pack you it. know you shouldn't be doing that. And I forgot about it, so I put my own seasoning in. There was wine involved. <laughs> and I put my own seasoning on top of their cruddy seasoning. And so it was a pile of, I sauteed the mushrooms and zucchinis and everything. And everything was good until I decided to put seasoning on top of theirs. And so mm-hmm. when you get these seasoning packets, isn't that kind of the warning sign that you're about to go on the sodium ride? And the yeah. Oh lives. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Danger. Mm-hmm. Danger. Will mm-hmm. Robinson. That's it. Danger. Yeah. Danger. Will Robinson. That's what Nancy said. Because she kept looking at us cooking. Because are you sure you don't need help? I'm like, nah. I know how to cook yeah. on a gas stove. <laughs> yeah. So. So, mm. I, Ivan, I, I am wondering. Um, yes. I mean, I know you're going to talk to us about grilled Pacific swordfish today and the recipe there, but. Is the magic in preparing fish, having fresh fish, or can you do it using frozen fish? You you can do it both ways, and I'll tell you. You always want to get it fresh, okay? If you're buying, when I was working at Top of the Market, and we brought all our fish in whole. So we always got fresh fish, and you could see the eyes were clear, the gills were red, and the cavity smelled like perfume. Scales weren't coming off. It was beautiful. Or if you go to a fishmonger and you're looking at, for example, let's say Pacific swordfish, and it's fresh, you'll see there's a little bit of a bloodline that runs through it. And you don't want it with a heavy bloodline. You want it light, and it's fire engine red. When you see that, you know it's fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, 
fish has to be fresh. You, you, you know, you're talking about you buy it, you have a two-day window to cook it. It's not like meat that gets aged and put in cryovac. Mm. Frozen fish, there are some really good companies where they actually process it on the boat. They put it in a cryovac, a vacuum seal, and you can see, even with some of the frozen, the bloodline is bright, bright red. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so they're handling it correctly. The trick is when you're buying fish, for example, some swordfish boats <clears throat> excuse me, will go out for mm-hmm. three days. And so the fish is really fresh. Some will go out for a month. And that's when you want to buy, you know, the fish purchases by what they call top boat. That's the last fish that's caught. The ones on the mm-hmm. bottom have been in ice for a month. Ew. So it's really, really, you have to know how to buy fish. You have to know the questions. And it's a visual thing. You have to know what to look for. But fresh is the way to go. Right. Always. Okay. Right. Even so, before you get into your recipe, I, I have an interesting story about the uh, in Japan, in Tokyo, going to the fish market there and seeing the yeah. big tuna market. Have you ever been there? Yeah. No, but I've seen, uh, I've gone over that a lot with my students. It's an incredible, incredible market where they come out and they bid. And That's they right. actually somewhat freeze um, the tuna. It's not completely frozen. They put like a, like a frost on it. Right. And again, it's all fat levels. Uh, they're looking for tuna with the most fat. And yeah, um, very, unfortunately, very they do a lot of bluefin. You know, bluefin we have to right. watch. Because yeah. it's, 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 but it's like they get, I mean, I think the record was a million dollars. Somebody yeah. bought a fish from them. I mean, it's like, it's like That's gold. Right. Yeah. And we, you have to get up at like three in the morning because the bidding yeah. and the auction starts at four in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. By six o'clock, that it's I'd all over. See. Anyway, yeah, we, that's we, we, we diverge, but there you go. No, well, that's Big Blend Radio. That's that's all we do is uh, we diverge. Yeah. And we bring you here. We put a topic out there to bring everyone in and go, eh, you know, this is a psych. It's Summerfest. We're going to talk about winter. No, I'm kidding. But, Nancy, you had a question there. Oh, I was just going to ask if canned f- tuna is really fish because I'm allergic to shellfish and fish, but I've always been able to eat canned tuna. So I'm thinking when they say it's chicken of the sea, it's really chicken and not tuna. <laughs> Ask Jessica Simpson. No, it's, it, it, it's fish. It's usually um, skipjack or albacore. And what they do is they cook it in the can. Um, oh. In the 70s, people were buying it. It tasted like cat food. And then they came oh, up with a way to cook it in the can. You always <laughs> want to get albacore, um, that solid white albacore. But it's it's fish. That's not well, fishy. Come, doesn't taste fishy. I don't, I don't understand because I'm allergic to everything fish and mm-hmm. shellfish and fish, but mm-hmm. not tuna. I don't get it. So I don't think tuna is fish. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm you glad you're not. I'm, you can eat tuna. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's a, it seems that like weird? that's a. I stay away from all of it because I don't want any. I can't I don't eat want to canned the salmon. You can't eat I'll that. I mm-hmm. can't eat that, but I can eat yeah. tuna. It's the only. Interesting. Yeah, it's huh. weird. So I just Usually. always thought tuna is really not fish. <laughs> Let's take to you to a doctor and do those tests, Nancy, and see what happens. <laughs> no, no, I didn't have done that. Thank you very much. Good night. No. Well, Chef Ivan, this is interesting. So the swordfish. So this is like to me, this is that that beautiful creature with the with the sword nose, right? And so I know they they fish this. I, I know friends who go to Baja and and get them and and mm-hmm. you know cook them. Mm. So this is like the ultimate for summer grilling, right? Would you do it on a barbecue, mm. like you know, in the backyard and get your oh, friends yeah. around? Yeah, you know they're called uh, broadbills, and they use their <clears throat> their bills to actually get their prey. They knock them uh, kind of mm-hmm. unconscious, and then they they you know they're able to to eat squid and and, and different things, oh, wow. mackerel. They're an oh, amazing they're cool. amazing fish. Um, yeah. But the majority of people, when I was a kid, my parents used to eat swordfish on the East Coast, <clears throat> and it was <laughs> terrible because they overcooked it, so oh. it was very very dry. You never want to overcook fish. Swordfish Mm -hmm. has a steaky um, consistency. When you buy it, on one or two sides, there'll be skin. It's important that you leave the skin on because that keeps the fish moist. You take it off 
after you cook it, it pulls right off. But you either want to grill it or you want to broil it. And you want to keep it slightly on the rare side in the middle. Because when you take it off, the fish keeps cooking. So you want that slight translucency in the middle. Once you do that, swordfish is magnificent. When swordfish is made correctly, there's nothing like it. Um, Grill it, broil it. Another way you can do it is as a piccata. You do it piccata style in a saute pan over higher heat. But again, with all fish, you have to have translucency. You have to be connected to the fish from the time you pick it up in your hands and you season it. It's a feel. It's very different. It's not meat. It's different. It's fish. It's delicate. Mm-hmm. Um, and swordfish, mm. uh, you know, is, is creamy and buttery. You know, I'll tell you, when I was uh, in the restaurants as a chef and people would say, I want the swordfish well done. You know, you can order a filet mignon. They want it well done. I don't care. Eat it the way you want it. But when they did swordfish and they said, you know, cook it well, I wanted to take a fork and stick it in my brain. You know, I was <laughs> like, oh, that. my God. It's, it's not even going to be close to what it's supposed to be. So you gotta you got to mm-hmm. care for it. you got to really care for it. So this, I, mm-hmm. if, it, if it's, it, okay, so you talk about cooking the piccata part, and I look at it because mm-hmm. I'm going, okay, like, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is the thing with all of your recipes, we're always able to take it and adapt it to a different ingredient or build mm-hmm. on it, right? There's always this foundation. So you've got this beautiful glaze mm-hmm. that sounds amazing mm-hmm. with the marmalade mm-hmm. and butter and I'm like in the white vinegar I'm thinking I already want Chardonnay right now like I'd like to change my wine right now I want Chardonnay Um, but now now I'm hungry and thirsty I'm looking at going I could probably do this with chicken or even pork in a weird way right or no oh yes yeah what you're Mm -hmm. doing is you're creating a gastric gastric is when you take an acid and something sweet the acid is the vinegar Mm -hmm. Yeah. The um, the um, marmalade has the sugar in it. I use the sugar free, and then the butter kind of sits in the middle, mm-hmm. and you you work it down in a saute pan until it becomes a little syrupy. That gives such a clean, clean flavor. It allows the swordfish to come out. So you're not disguising it. You're not putting something on that's going to be too heavy. You're doing something that's just going to help that fish when it hits your palate, just kind of explode with flavor. And, and, you know, swordfish is juicy. You know, I don't use the word moist. I never like to use the word moist except like for that, piece of don't cake. Don't start us like, on the word moist. You know that was the most yeah, hated word one good. year? I thought it was funny, but anyway. You know that our prime minister just, our prime minister in Canada just used the word moist. She and did? Uh, got, got a lot of publicity. <laughs> they used it on he was, Schitt's he Creek said on the speaking TV show moistly. Schitt's Creek. They did that yeah. that the, their last moist. their last episode or the last run. They used the word moist, and Moira did moist. Moist. She's yeah. like, yeah, no. We were like, Moira said moist, and she said it loud and proud. So anyway, sorry, I would go back to your moist swordfish. <laughs> so it's juicy. It's always juicy, ne- never moist, and and you cut into it, and it's juicy like a steak. As long as you don't overcook it. Oh, I got the and you know when now. it's done. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I have a question on marinating. So do you yeah. marinate swordfish before you cook it? I do. I put sometimes a little olive oil, um, maybe some herbs, and then it's up to you what you want to put into it. You can put a little olive oil and soy if you want. Um, you can put a touch of Worcestershire. You don't want to use any citrus because it'll cook the fish. You can put different curries in. You can, you know, use different different things. But a light marinade. Um, what I do is when I grill the fish, I um, put the marinade, I put the glaze on, and then when it comes off the grill, I use what's left of the marinade, uh, the glaze actually, and I hit it again. The entire time I'm cooking the fish, I'm 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 putting that glaze on. So mm-hmm. it starts to get a almost like a light amber color, and that mm-hmm. sugar starts to cook, and that vinegar starts to work, and that butter starts to brown. And, um, again, I want the swordfish to taste like swordfish. 
Right. That's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that it does actually have that part. of. Now, would you do like a beer or would it be like a Chardonnay or a Pinot or uh, on the side with this? All of them. All of them. You know what? You could also do red wine with swordfish. Why not? You know, it doesn't really matter anymore. A Chard, a Viognier, Sauvignon Blanc, a nice beer, ice cold, um, a mm. hard lemonade. Mm. A Sauvignon. Oh, wow. That's my new wine, yeah. Sauvignon. A Grenache. Sauvignon. Mm. Oh, you can do a nice or a Rosé. Oh, a nice crisp yes. Rosé. Yes, a nice crisp Rosé. Absolutely. I can't yeah, believe the wine we just had. In Colorado, we were up in the wine country, and you wouldn't believe the white okay. wines, the the wine that, I mean, the, the they use a semonier that they normally, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, that they would normally put in like a blend. And they serve mm. it like, here's your pure goodness, and it is like liquid sunshine. Okay. It is amazing. You know, I can't drink, and, I can't drink white wine. I can't do it. I only read. I touched, I don't know what mm. it is about white wine. I drink one glass of white wine. And I'm like buzzed out of my head. I can't touch it. <laughs> Champagne it's too. It's moist. It's moist. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, That's interesting. Huh. Sugar wow. content. It could be. Yeah. Maybe. I thought we didn't we have some white wine when we started. No, you had beer. You, you you like light beers, huh? That's kind of more of your thing. Yes, it's, light beer. I, you know, in San Diego, they're so famous for craft beers. These things are like 600 calories a piece, you know? Mm. And it's like people drink these huge craft beers. It's super high in alcohol. You said huge. And they're like wow. 600 calories. <laughs> you said wow. moist and huge on the same segment. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's Sunday. I could do that. That's funny. It's funny. But, you know, it's, it's, you're right about that. I mean, it's those beers are heavy, you know? Yeah. I've. I've I've gotten myself sick on those, like thinking, oh, I'm into it. And then next thing you know, even the flavor is so heavy. Yeah. Like, heavy. it's too rich. <clears throat> yeah. I don't even know if you can eat with, like, other than a pretzel or right. something. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. That's a hard thing. It's pairing. IPAs. <laughs> it's a lot of IPAs. 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 Give me a like really, it. really ice cold light beer. I put mm. a little bit of lemon in it. I like Corona, Corona Light with mm. a nice lime or lemon. I'm yeah. happy. That's cool. I'm I like with that. you on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, Chef Ivan, do you get to go back and teach this year? Or what's happening in the schools? I don't know. I don't know. Wow. Oh. <clears throat> we don't know. We have no idea what they're going to do. I would imagine uh-huh. it's going to be a hybrid social distancing along with, I mean, because I can't, you know, I have 40, 40 students to a class. I can't have them in the, in the kitchen shoulder to shoulder. I can't mm-hmm. have them in the lecture room unless it's six feet apart. Um, so they're working on a lot of different approaches. But um, mm-hmm. I have no idea yet. I'm waiting to hear. Wow. So can you can you I'd, can you teach virtually? Do you think? Can you think you can teach cooking virtually? Oh, yeah. Like people buying ingredients and preparing yes. things. Yes. Yes. I do. Home. I have. Hundreds of hundreds of videos that my wife, mm-hmm. uh, she produced a lot of them and from different TV shows. So I have hundreds mm-hmm. of videos that I use. And uh, it's very interesting because my students, when we're doing virtual, um, well, you know, distance, they did some of their best work. I had mm-hmm. them submit everything from baked goods to meats and chickens and small. I was amazed. Hmm. what some of these students were doing because uh, in the classroom they tend to get a little a little shy in the lab but you teach them technique and then you work with them through it and then you set them on their way and I was amazed with some of the stuff that I saw I had this one student that was just mind-boggling the stuff hmm. that she was turning in mind-boggling huh. Wow, huh. amazing. Well, amazing. They say there's absence. good that's coming from all of this. Yeah. There's good for, that's mm-hmm. coming from our uh, yeah. social distancing yeah. and uh, and new ways of learning. Mm. Yeah. I read yeah. this thing good. about there's um, when kids are learning at home, for the most part, there's a lack. They can actually concentrate on what they're doing instead of looking around the classroom and trying to impress somebody, and that there's a lack of the bully syndrome. Yes, when they're working and a lot home. of other things. Yes, yeah. and a lot of other things. Cell phones, distractions, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. there's a lot. So um, 
yeah, you can, you can, you can teach it. Now I wouldn't want to, you know, go to cardi. I wouldn't want to be doing cardiology classes online, but yeah, you can, you can teach, you can teach cooking. You can teach mm-hmm. cooking. Mm-hmm. Luckily, That's awesome. I, I have those videos, which really help. Mm-hmm. Everybody, I told you at the beginning of the show, it's Chef Ivan cooking with his pickle. And so <laughs> on that note, um, we've got a song to play for you. And Chef Ivan, I know it's just like a whirlwind show today, but thank you for joining us on our summer fest and waiting for You're us welcome. too because we were running late. But um, we want to say happy Father's Day to you because we know you've got a Mumi and you've got a doggy, and one of them is pickle. <laughs> We want to say happy birthday. I have, I have a pickle, a kugel, and a knish. They're, they're oh, all I'm named well, after well, Jewish right delicacies. <laughs> I name all my pets, Tracy and I, after Jewish delicacies. So if we get another dog, it's going to be what? Bagel? Bagel. Bagel will be the fourth one. <laughs> oh, God. I love great. it. I love it. That's well, hi funny. to Tracy too. She's he's awesome. Sure. I, I I and please tell her I really enjoy her Facebook posts about you know the quarantine and what goes on in her mind, the deep dark side of Tracy. Um, I really enjoy <laughs> the that. Dark side. Th- 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 no, let me tell you, she will win on who gets the last glass of wine. Tracy will always win. Yes. <laughs> always, I know that for sure. All right. Well, listen, enjoy your summer. I know we'll be chatting with you again soon. Thank you so much for the great recipe. Everyone, Chef Ivan's grilled sword. uh, sword. Did I say something (laughs) wrong there? I did, didn't I? I did not say that. I did not say that. I did not. Somebody else said that. I heard it. I I was about to say Pacific because it has to be Pacific, right? But they can change it up if they want to. But Grilled Pacific Swordfish is up on (laughs) Blend Radio and TV.com, so check it out there. Nothing like live radio, everybody. Here it is. It's a song called Da Da Da. uh, Da 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 Da. It is uh, from the Madisons. Lizzie Harrow wrote this for her dad. And it's off of their album, Air on the Side of Love. So we're going to play that. And you can keep up with them at madisonsmusic.com. And then after that, we're going to talk a little bit about Alaska. So enjoy. Thanks, Chef Ivan. Stay tuned, everyone. You're welcome, guys. Thanks, Thanks Chef you. Ivan. <laughs> Bye.
Make it sure that the earth 